we. I am excited to be back for part two of the values series in understanding values and the role they play in motivation. And so if uh, you didn't hear the first part, go back and listen to that. It's in the previous episode. Uh, and in the last episode, I spoke about values and the levels of thinking and the evolution of uh, consciousness throughout those levels. It's a must listen. So do go back and listen to it if you haven't listened to that one as yet. And uh, today in, in this episode, we're going to be going deep into understanding your internal values that affect each area of your life. And, uh, and this is really, this is really important thing to know and to understand values in this way that I'm going to be sharing with you because, you know, I don't know about you, but I've been to plenty of different workshops where uh, someone says, we're going to do values work and they give you a sheet of paper with a bunch of, you know, aspirational words on there. And they say, you know, pick off five or 10 of these words from this page and they are your values. Now, your unconscious mind doesn't work like that, right? Your mind doesn't work like that. Your values aren't just things that you randomly pick off a piece of paper and decide, yes, they sound nice. Your conscious mind might like that, right? Because there's a bit of ego and it says, oh, these sound really nice and I, I'm a good person and, you know, they're very virtuous, um, all these nice aspirational words, but they're not really going to motivate you consistently. Okay. And that's what we're talking about today, because the truth is your values are neither good nor bad. Okay. They're not positive or negative necessarily. They are just what is important to you, right? And what you'll prioritize and expand your resources for. Okay. It's what you're motivated by. That's what your values are. And so when we say you're motivated by them, you can't help but act on your values okay you don't need reminding of what your values are okay you don't need reminding of what your values are when people say oh, I'm not living up to my values no you're living up to your values you just have a different idea consciously of what you want your values to be than what they actually are right because you're always living up to your values because that's what you live up to okay so Whenever I'm working with a client and creating really deep transformational change, values work is a key piece that holds the answer to many of the questions as to why a person currently has or doesn't have what they want in their life or in their business, in their health, in their relationships, right? So, so for an example of this, I work with a lot of, uh, you know, really heart-centered uh, female coaches and practitioners. And a common problem is that when they start their business, uh, they don't make a lot of money, right? And so when I look at their values in business, okay, so there's a way I can elicit their, their values and, uh, and draw out from their unconscious mind what are their values. When we do this in the context of business, we'll find that, you know, if they're not making any money, it's because money isn't even represented in their values, right? It's not important to them. Or if it is, it's represented in a negative or kind of stressful way, right? That doesn't feel good. And so they end up more avoiding making money than they do making money. So we're going to dive into this a little bit further. Hey there, fabulous listeners of the Coaching Circle. It's Tony Everard, your go-to NLP Master Trainer and Business Mindset Coach. Elevate yourself to new heights by joining the Coaching Circle Insiders, a premium subscription membership tailored for coaches and wellbeing practitioners at an incredibly affordable price. Inside, gain exclusive access to a supportive community, valuable resources and expert guidance on mastering your coaching, communication and business mindset skills. Let's get close and personal with weekly training and live Q&A to get all your questions answered. Sign up now by clicking the link in the show notes and I'll see you on the inside. So let's go back a bit and answer the question, where do your values even come from and what role do they really play? And your values come from your environment essentially so it might be your family 
society you live in, the school you went to, the friends that you hung out with uh, at school, or maybe the friends' uh, houses that you went and hung out at. Uh, it could be through religion, communities that you're involved in, could be your workplace, uh, even the media, right? The media plays a big role into what people's values are these days. And some people would like to think that your values are something that once you have them, that they can't be changed. But that's really not true either, right? Values change by themselves over time and in different areas of your life because things change, right? Everything changes. The good news is that in NLP, we know that you can purposefully change your values as well. So as to make them aligned and congruent with the results that you want to achieve and how you want to live your life, right? So if you're thinking, you know, I want to be really successful in business or I want to be have this really fit, healthy body or I want to have a great relationship, then, and you don't have that now, those things aren't represented in your values. So by doing values work, you can align that. So what's important to you means you'll be motivated to do the things that create those results that you want to have. Okay, so your values are those things that motivate you to do or to avoid what's in your life. And your values also act as an unconscious filter through which you perceive the world. So if you've listened to you know a few of my episodes, you would have heard me talk about the NLP communication model before. And that's where it explains how we process information that we receive externally and how we process it through our mind and you know the internal representation that we hold, the pictures that we have in our mind, the things, how we feel about that. And then essentially what happens with our physiology and then our behaviors and our results. Okay, so your mind receives around 11 million bits per second, right? 11 million bits per second of information. So that's bits of information that come in through your, what you can see, what you can hear, what you can smell, taste, feel, right? That's all this information. And uh, your mind can't deal with all of that at once. So you have this set of filters that's made up of things like your values and beliefs and your memories and, you know, how you relate to time, space, matter, energy, the decisions you make, right? Your attitudes, all this kind of stuff. But your values play a very important part in these filters. And so what these filters do as filters, you know, the word filter means it filters out some information. The filters in your mind will delete, distort and generalize the information that you receive to make a much more manageable chunk of information, say like 134 bits, right, per second. So from 11 million all the way down to 134 bits per second, there's a lot of information that gets filtered out. And the job of the filters is essentially to prove the world to be the place that you think it is. Okay, so it's very interesting when we think about this. So whatever you believe to be true about the world, and whatever you think is important, that's what the world will be for you. Okay, so you that means you perceive the world as you are rather than as it is. And we know this is true, right? Some people find the world to be a very scary place to live in. Others people think that the world is amazing. They can be this, they can be living in the same street, right? Like they can have that very different idea of the world according to their own mind and the only their own way that they uh, process that information so your values are what's important to you right they filter this information they bring in information that's important for you and uh, it could also be things when we talk about what's important it could be things that you want more of but it also could be things that you want to avoid okay so um, if you're in your values there's something that represents um, safety or not feeling safe, then as you filter the world, you'll no doubt bring in information that proves there's a lot of unsafe things in the world. Okay, that's how these filters work. And, and so if, for example, uh, if we look at someone's values in health, Right, because you'll have um, you'll have values like what's your overarching values, what's important to you about 
your life, okay, and living, but then you'll have values in each different context of your life as well. So you'll have values in health, for example. So if someone's if someone values health, right, how do you know? They'll tell you all about it. <laughs> That's a bit of a joke. But if someone values health and being really strong and energized, then they'll filter information that will bring in more information at, that provides opportunities for them to be healthier and stronger and more energized, right? They'll also be motivated to do things that are aligned with them being healthier and stronger and more energized. Okay, you won't have to make them accountable. Like their or their values make them accountable. You'll clearly be able to see that they have the results of being healthy in their appearance, right? You can see people who value health. You can see people who value working out and eating clean and being hydrated because they look healthy. You can see it. It's very, very clear. However, if someone has, you know, they might be, valuing their health but more valuing not being sick right then they might be more worried about avoiding being sick or they don't want to be overweight or they don't want to be tired but if if that's all they're thinking about if that's what they're trying to avoid all the time then they'll likely struggle to ch achieve any consistent results and they'll have setbacks after setbacks because their focus is more about what they're trying to avoid um, which is being sick, overweight, and tired. Okay, so you, you can't get away from that which you keep energy around, right? You get more of what you have the most energy around. So if all you're saying is, I want to avoid being sick, well, guess what? You'll you'll be sick. If all you say is, I want to, I wish I wasn't overweight, well, then you, you'll end up more overweight, okay? So your values for them to be effective for you in getting what you want have to be represented in your unconscious mind as what it is that you want, what it is that you're motivated, you want to be motivated towards rather than what you're trying to avoid. And, uh, and you know, values are also what's behind people having boom and bust cycles in their finances or in their business. Okay, so if someone has, you know, some conflicting values around money where they are like, yeah, I want to have more money, but um, the reason I want to have more money is because I don't want to be broke and, you know, I don't want to be left behind and I don't want to, you know, lose my house or whatever else. Then again, there's too much energy around what they don't want and what they're, what they're avoiding. So whenever they get ahead financially, they'll either manage to spend that money or attract some expenses to put them back in a situation of lack, right? only to then restart that cycle and then get motivated to get out of that situation again. That's the boom and bust, right? It's like if you're only motivated to get away from something, as soon as you're far enough away from it, you end up back there because you lose that motivation, right? So this is what we need to look at in people's uh, values. And there's a second very interesting thing about values and that is the connection to your beliefs. Okay, so values and beliefs are very uh, interlinked. And each of your values, so if you're in health, say someone who had, um, you know, if you listed someone's values in health and they're like, okay, what's important to you about health? And they're like, um, sleeping well, feeling strong, having energy, um, um, what else? Eating organic food, whatever it might be, right? Da, 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 da. They're all their their things. Um, each of those values in that context will have a bunch of beliefs around it. Okay, so for example, um, it's important to me to eat organic foods. Some beliefs around that will be uh, because organic foods are better for your health. Uh, could be that um, you know, processed foods are bad for your health. Uh, could be like it's better for the planet. I don't know. Could be a bunch of beliefs, right, that are around any given value. And so that is very, very good news when it comes to, uh, you know, working with values and personal development and changing, creating personal change is because if you can just change one value, 
Well, in the process of changing that value, you're going to clean up a whole bunch of unhelpful beliefs. Okay, someone's got all clean uh, aligned values. You don't need to touch them. You leave them as they are. But if they had, um, you know, a value in their health about um, it's important for me not to be sick, right? And around that that value, there was beliefs like, oh, everyone in my family gets sick at this age. Um, you know, it's in my whatever makeup to get sick. Oh, some if someone around me is sick, I get it. all these kinds of things. If they have beliefs around all that value, you clean up that value, and all those unhelpful beliefs will shift as well. Right, so it's very effective. It's very effective at changing beliefs that you don't maybe can't even find, right? That they're, they're, they're not even aware of them being there. So it's very powerful to be able to do values work with people to help them create change and for them to become motivated to doing the things that they want to do. Okay, so um, when people have their values aligned, they don't need accountability part. Um, partners right they don't need accountability partners you don't have to be as a coach forever reminding them to do the things that they need to do because if it's in their values that's their motivation right that's your motivation what's in your values so for example like I like going for a walk every day okay now I like going for a walk every day nobody has to remind me to go for a walk because it's important to me right? It's important to me because I believe walking is good for my health and that if I walk, it helps move my circulation. It means I get more fresh air when I'm outside. All that fresh air is good for me. Um, it improves my mood. I get thinking time. Like there's a whole bunch of beliefs around this value for me about walking. So no one has to remind me to do it, right? It's not an effort for me to do it. I will fit in a walk wherever I can because it's important to me. Yeah, sometimes other things will come as a priority, right? Like if I've got a really heavy training week or something like that and I can't walk when I'd normally do it, I do less, um, it's not the end of the world, right? But I know in my mind, I'm like, okay, where can I fit in walks? Right, as soon as this is over, I'm going to be back to walking. Like I get myself back on par because that's important. It's the same as the water that I drink. Right, I drink uh, like filtered water, alkaline water, um, and because it's important to me, drinking clean water. And there's a bunch of beliefs around that. No one has to remind me to drink that water. Right, no one has to remind me not to drink the tap water because I've got it's important to me to drink clean water. Right, it's in it's in your values. So the things that are in your values that are important to you, you'll just do. Okay, you'll just do. So. When you can do values work, you can, these things that you already do well are great. You don't have to change those. But if there are any things that you're not doing that you want to be doing, you can change them in your values, right? You can help your, your clients change them. And, and this is all what I teach at NLP Master Practitioner Training. You know, in episode one, I spoke about how, um, you know, these, although I'm doing this series on values over two episodes, when I teach values, I teach it over two full days, right? Two full days. So there's a lot more in-depth understanding about values and how you elicit them and how you discover what's really, you know, represented in those values and, and how you can release anything that's not helpful and how you can change the values, you know, helping that person become motivated, right? It's the thing I do. I work, I teach it. I would do this with people. So there's a lot more to it, but this is just getting you an understanding that why you need to understand your own values, right? Why you need to do values work for yourself. Okay. So in business, for example, if we look at in business and, you know, I mentioned before, I work with a lot of heart centered, you know, female coaches and practitioners and things like that. And often when I elicit their values, the things that they say that are important to them in business are things like helping people, making a difference, having freedom, having flexibility, um, joy, you know, happiness, excitement, all of these things, right? That they're all lovely. They're all lovely to have, but they're they're not appropriate to be the main the main values in business. Okay. And we know it's not appropriate because they have all these values and they're all, you know having you know helping people but not making any money 
And if you're in business, you need to be making money. So in business, your values need to, what's important to you about business needs to represent things like results, marketing, sales, um, systems, profitability, right? Networking, whatever that might be industry specific to you. All the things that are important for business success. Okay, of course, alongside of that, you can have some helping people if that's what you do, right? That that's That's still important. But the business values, you need to adopt that place of business within yourself. Okay, you can still be someone who loves joy and excitement and everything else, and you can bring that into business. But in business, you need to be focused on things in business. You need to be motivated to do things that operate your business in a successful way. And so, you know, this is where I often find a lot of um, challenges and obstacles and conflicts for people, okay? Because their neurology, and this relates to episode one, their neurology hasn't evolved because they haven't been in the environment of business before. So now they start a business. Well, you know, you've got to be in business and act like a business owner and be around other businesses to develop the neurology of business, which is knowing your numbers, results, marketing, sales, systems, profitability, you know, all of those kinds of things. Okay. And when you then uh, align your values in that way, then it's very easy to do all those things, right? It's very easy to do all of those things. You'll be motivated to do them. Okay. It's like my podcast, for example, I do an episode of this podcast every week. No one has to remind me to do it. It's important to me. It's important to me that I do it because I like it. It's a great format that I enjoy doing. I get to communicate my ideas. I get to help people, right? It's a way that more people can get to know me and what it is that I do. All of those things are important for me in the space of, uh, of business, but it also incorporates the things that I just like doing. Okay, so your values, you know, they want to represent business, but in the way that you like doing business. Okay, so when someone's values are aligned with their outcomes, like what it is that they want to experience, then there's no stopping them from having the life and the results that they want. It's it's incredibly empowering to have your values aligned. And the, the thing is, not a lot of people know how to do this kind of work. Like I said, we see a lot of this stuff of just pick out these values and they're, they're yours. That's not how it works. Okay, if you are needing a lot of accountability, it's a sign that your values aren't properly aligned. Okay, so to discover your own values, you can, as a very basic way of getting an idea of what your values are, you can ask yourself this very simple question. Okay, and so for example, if it was around business, you would say, what's important to me right now about business? And you write down everything that comes to mind on that list. And you don't make them positive if they're not coming up to you as positive, right? You write them down as they are on that list because any negations or any negative um, sort of representations are a very important sign for you that there's some work to do, that there's some things to clean up, okay? And so you look at that list, everything you write down, what's important to me for business and just brain dump. And it's just like usually one word type things. Um, and then have a look at them and see, are these things here? Are they supporting my success in business? You can do it in health as well. You can do it in health. You could do it in uh, the context of family. You could do it in the context of finances. You could do it in the context of spirituality. I mean, it's a good idea to do it in all of those areas to be honest, so that you've got a good idea of what all your values are. Um, it is a much easier process to do with a coach, okay? It's much easier to process to do with a coach because your values tend to be very unconscious. So when you're trying to consciously do it, um, it can be a bit challenging. So if you need some help, send me an email, Tony at TonyEverard.com, right? I love values. I'm, I'm happy to help. But really make this a priority for you. When you understand your values, it just takes so much of the hard work out of you getting your results. And uh, that's what we're all about. Oh, 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 oh.